mind. The will of God is upon the strength of the renewal of your mind. As I'm here, I'm seeing God changing lives. You are the only one seeing another thing. God has called you into just. You are seeing nations. You are seeing the transformation of lives. Others are looking. And they are saying, let me see. They will fail. They will do this. If they are on their own realm. You are on your own realm. You will receive what you believe. They will receive what they believe. Because the just shall live by his faith. I will live by your own faith. The first transformation is the transformation of your mind by the word of God. The second transformation is transformation by prayer. Luke chapter 9 from 29. The Bible speaking says, But I tell you of a truth, there will be some standing here which shall not test of death till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass about an eighth day after this saying, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and speak of his disease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. I don't want to go down to the stories of what the apostle tried to do, but I want to point to you is that there was a transformation that came by prayer. That while Jesus Christ began to pray, suddenly he was transformed how comes as a spiritual man you have been praying and you don't believe there is a realm in glory that you can enter into it was prayer that many of us prayed and as we are speaking in tongues our hands begin to shake i don't even know what it is i look for it look for it in different books i read this one he said this and that all i knew the lord told me later he said just continue following me don't focus on the shaking of the hands keep on following me as we are following me the hands were shaking later on legs began to shake eyes begin to be open ears begin to be open I was standing one day an angel appeared to me and when the angel appeared to me i began to see angels i was on my own jesus appeared he put a coal upon my tongue and i began to speak with utterance these things come by following but as you are following remain upon the altar and continue to pray by the time you begin to pray like fractional distillation prophetic can switch on insight can switch on revelation can switch on sometimes i'm lying down and as i'm praying suddenly i'm caught up in the spirit and i can just see a book and a scroll and an angel can carry it and throw it towards my direction when i come back i carry a pen i begin to write i begin to write before i check i discover it's 300 pages and they tell me title it this say the prophetic vision. as i will lie down again as i'm praying i will now see another one again they may take me to a place i will see a book i will read it there in the spirit when i come back i'll begin to write say call it pathway to the anointing when you begin to work with God, He will begin to show you things. Your own job is to walk in obedience. When you are working with God, it's a personal affair. Don't ask your neighbor, is this one God? Is it not God? Is this one God? Your neighbor does not know. You are the only one where you are. If God wants to appear to you, He will not come and beg your neighbor and say, should I appear to this one? When God wants to appear to Saul, He didn't ask Ananias. He just appeared. He said, go to Ananias. Ananias, when he came back, he said, Ananias said, no, this guy is not qualified. He said, oh God, what is your business? Am I not the one that said this? Say, say, thou art the anointed cherub. Why? I have said this so. There is no one among God that is not God that set you so. It's God that set Apostle Abila so. If God has given him this territory, fast and kill yourself. There's nothing you can do. God gives potions to people. Potions. He gives potions to men. And when he gives potions to men, it's their job to fight and contend and possess it. And so long as they remain fighting and contending, there is nothing you can do. So while he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Do you realize that your life is not over until you stop praying? I don't care what they told you. I don't care how much they call you a failure. See, there is a God that helped men. When that God look upon your life and he begin to help, a prostitute can become the only hope of the nation. When that God begins to help men, an improper can become the only hope. When that God begins to help men, somebody that never believed they can be used by God, become the one that God used. Many of you may not even know why God is appearing to you all the time. You are a drunkard, God is appearing to you. In fact, you went and slept with a guy. When you are done, you still have encountered Jesus saying he loves you. He wants to see work with you. Don't you understand that something is wrong inside there? 
Is God stupid? No. He's a believer. He's trying to beckon you to the place of the altar so that he can burnt away those infirmities. You are done masturbating and suddenly you wake up and Jesus still look upon you. He say, you are a prophet. And you are wondering, how can I be a prophet? Somebody call me and say, Apostle, I can't believe God is calling me. I say, hey, it's a good thing. I say, you don't know who I am. I say, I understand. He began to explain me how much infirmity has. I said, God is calling you, but he has not sent you yet. He's calling you so that he can work on you. Answer yes first. Then you will not understand why he's calling you. This night, and subsequent in this conference, we are going to put ourselves upon the altar of sacrifice and allow God to point all the possibilities in our lives. And let me tell you, if God has called you, there is nothing you can ever do that will succeed many of you don't know that the failures in your life is because of the calling of god if god allow you to succeed in other things then how will his kingdom prosper you don't know that if god prosper you without actually prospering his kingdom you will not ever serve the kingdom you don't know that so you wonder why you are doing everything is failing but the day you pick up the microphone and as you are singing you are doing business it's working as you are preaching you are doing business it's working as you went for evangelism, you came back to shop. It's working. Now the key is that you hold the sword in another heart. <laughs> Answer the call of God upon your life. And by adventure of God, tell you, leave that boy for a living shop. If he said, leave that guy, leave him. Leave that lady, leave her. Leave that job, leave it. See, anything God tell you to do, leave it. After a while, you will realize why he says so. You may not know at that moment. But later you will realize because God can never be wrong. It was that the Akwami that was telling us earlier then he said it is a dangerous thing for a man to argue with God and it's more disastrous for the man to win the argument. Many of us have been arguing with God again and again. Now we have won it. And that is why God has left you like that because you are winning. This night you will return, you will return back to that argument and say God yes to your will. Jesus appeared at Mount Gethsemane and he began to ask, is it your will? Is it my will? Is it your will? Whose will before? Was it me that tell him to come and die? The Bible said Jesus, the son of God who was crucified before the foundation of the earth. In fact, let us make money. If there is anything like realm of knowledge, he was the word became flesh. How comes he's arguing with God? Because it's part of the natural tendency of the infirmity of man to even doubt God. And in the very midst of breakthrough, he's still doubting God. After all the glory, after all the glory, you are doubting at this moment. And after a while, he said, not my will, but your will. I want to let you understand that whatsoever you think you are going through now, is because you have not come to the point to say, not my will, but your will. 